Hello. We thank God for granting us the opportunity to go through another lecture. Let's have a short prayer as we begin. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we glorify you, thank you for your love for us, thank you for your protection, thank you for all the good things that you have done in our lives, thank you for keeping us even up to this time. We pray that as you have always helped us today, you will see us through this lecture. I pray that you grant me wisdom, understanding, give me the ability to give all the information that my student needs to have to them. I pray that you give them the ability to fully comprehend what you will be going through. We thank you for prayer answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we... Are looking at engineering drawing we are going to continue from where we stopped before the break so um, before we went on break we have done up to sectional drawings sectional views and sectional drawings and uh, today we are going to consider assembly drawing right so here a machine when you see a machine or any uh, equipment is made up of various assembling of various parts and links and it is important as an engineer to understand the relation between the various parts of the machine for the purpose of design and for production so assembly drawing is one which represents various parts of a machine in their working position so if you take a machine or any machine uh, for instance we have different links different parts and in order for that machine to be made if it's being developed we need to put all the various parts together and we need to be able to position them in the way that they'll be able to work relative to one another to achieve the purpose of that machine to achieve its main function and that means that the various links and parts have to go to their uh, proper locations before that machine can work appropriately these drawings are classified these assembly drawings are classified as design assembly drawing we have design assembly drawing um, working assembly drawing we also have sub assembly drawings installation assembly drawings and other ones an assembly drawing made at the design stage while developing the machine is known as the design assembly drawing so when it is being made at the design stage where well, now as an engineer you want to come out with a particular machine maybe you are inventing the machine and as i've been saying you have conceived that idea in your mind and nobody knows it so if you want to bring it out you need to be able to develop it 
on paper as an engineer so as you produce that on paper adding all the various parts that make up the whole machine that is design assembly drawing so that is mainly at the design stage it is made to a large scale so that the required changes or modifications may be thought of by the designer keeping in view both the functionality uh, and then the artistic appearance of the machine so here as we are producing the part we are not only looking at it that is going to work as we want but also we want to, we want it to look appealing so that if you are selling it customers will buy customers who like it that it's not only working as required but also uh, aesthetically is something that is appealing and something that is nice all right then the um, sub assembly drawing is an assembly drawing of a group of related parts which form a part of a complicated machine so in this case as you have a machine typically very complicated one uh, there are different sub assemblies for instance if you take the uh, vehicle or a car for instance it's made up of different individual parts but there are also different individual assemblies within the car if you take the engine of a car for instance it's made up of different parts so that alone is a sub assembly if you take the engine alone it's a sub assembly if you take the transmission system it's also on its own a sub assembly like the gearbox is there on its own it's a sub assembly if you take the clutch system it's also a sub assembly on its own then when you come to the wheels too we also have some assemblies over there all right so those are individual sub assemblies within the whole assembled uh, machine then we also have the final assembly drawings and they are prepared from the design assembly drawings or from the working drawings All right so the working drawing also known as the component drawing so here you have the design assembly drawing or the working drawing the working drawing here as we are going to manufacture uh, the parts you have to give details of the individual parts of the whole assembly drawing so the individual parts give details of them when you have to produce the final assembly drawings is bringing together all those uh, individual parts that have already been uh, detailed When making assembly drawings, there are certain steps to follow in order to make it easier. And the first one is to understand the purpose, principle of operation and field of application of the given machine. This will help in understanding the functional requirements of individual parts and their locations. If we have a pre-understanding or pre-knowledge of the machine that we want to assemble, it gives us an overview of how the parts are to be put together and how they function. So it helps us in putting them together easily. All right, so for instance, if we are to assemble the uh, car or the engine of a car, first we need to understand the basic principle of how it works so if you know how let's say a, a four stroke engine uh, uh, works then when we are putting the things together we are pre-informed that in order for us to achieve this functionality this is how it should be like 
so if we have that understanding already it helps us to be able to easily put them together and we have to also ex examine the external and internal features of the individual parts of the machine so here you have their parts and as the parts have been made now as you are going to put them together you need to understand examine know in detail what are the internal features of the parts and what are the external features of the part and we are able to note that to help us to understand the relationship between that part and then other parts there so if you have let's say two components that you are to join together with both and that and you we know that if you are to join with both and that then those two components should have some holes within through which will pass the boat and then lock it with the nut so as we are we we are able to locate those features in them within those components then we are pre-informed that the boat should go through those two components and then we lock it up with the nut of course if you have boat and nut for instance and you want to pull them together to we you have the boat and then you have the nut we know that we will screw the nut onto the boat or we screw the boat in through the nut and we are able to determine that basically by examining the internal and external features of uh, those parts you need to choose a proper skill for the assembly drawing before you start the drawing you have to choose a proper skill and that will be dependent on the size of the drawing that you are going to make this is different from the patch drawings which we have done in uh, uh, technical drawing in this case you have different parts that you are putting together so certainly we understand that the overall dimension after the assembling is going to be greater maybe greater than just the dimension of one component because as we put one component in the other as we attach the various components we may end up with a very huge um, object and because of that we have to plan the scale and make sure that if we are going to draw it on a sheet of paper we have a scale that will be able to help us to fit the drawing onto the paper exactly and remember in this case too you may be asked to draw the plan of the assembly drawing the front view end view sectional view another thing so if you are to add all those views to it on one sheet of paper you need to make sure that the the whole drawings are able to fit perfectly on that paper and therefore you have to take the scale um into consideration make sure that the proper skill uh, scale is given then you also need to estimate the overall dimension of the views of the assembly drawing and make the outline blocks for each of the required views leaving enough space between them here you you have to also make sure that before you start the drawing you do some pre-assembling within your mind by looking at the dimensions of the draw the whole uh, dif the, the different parts of the drawing so before we put them together we have to consider uh, first we need to determine where the various parts are to fit together to form the whole assembly if you are to determine that then we have to uh, determine the dimensions and determine the overall dimension so that when we are creating space where we are to draw say the front view of the assembly the plan of the assembly or the end view of the assembly we are able to fit it perfectly we are able to fit it perfectly on their respective locations without any problem and if we are to add dimensions to it too because there should be some room where we can add the dimensions and 
the next thing is to draw the axis of symmetry for the views of the assembly drawing so you want to draw end view plan front view you have to indicate the axis of symmetry if you are drawing objects that are symmetrical in certain respect then the axis of symmetry must come and that will help you to be able to position that object all right and also you need to begin with the view from the front by drawing first the main parts of the machine and then adding the rest of the parts in the sequence of assembly all right so in this case as you are starting the assembly you first have to begin with what i call the mother component of the assembly so here you look at all the parts which of them is the mother one the mother one is usually the largest one where that one is put down and you have to attach the other components to it let's take the engine block for instance you want to assemble an engine block first the engine block is there then the other parts like the crankshaft you have the piston you have the connecting rod bearings and other things that are, are there the cylinder head you need to put the cam and camshaft and the every all the other things that are there but if you are to put those several things together you cannot uh, start by first of all putting the piston down and then connecting the head of uh, the head of the the engine or the cylinder head to it then you add the engine block and other things that is not how it's supposed to be done if we look at that object we can see that the largest piece or the largest part is the engine block the largest solid part the engine block and if that is the case then we can attach the other components to it like the piston is very small compared to the size of the engine block if you take the crankshaft for instance it's small compared to the size of the engine block if you take the connecting rod the bearings and other things they are all small compared to the size of the engine block so if the engine block is the main one we start with it and then as we start with it we attach the other components to it as we progress and project the project the other required views from the front view and complete the various views so as you have started with the front view you project the other required views and then you have it complete mark the locations and overall dimensions and add the part numbers on the drawing mark the location and overall dimensions and add the part numbers on the drawing because you have assembled the parts together now you cannot have the two dimensions of it you can only have the two dimensions when you have the parts removed in their individual components like in patch drawing as in the one we did in technical drawing we have a, a drawing a single component at a time so because of that you cannot uh, in this particular case dimension all the various components when you have several components together within one unit it's very difficult to do that to make your whole um, work dirty so what you do is you can give at this time the overall dimension of the assembly drawing then you also need to add what you call part numbers because as you have assembled you need to list the various parts that are there within the assembly so listing the part numbers we add what you call balloon and the balloon is where you will have something like a circle like this and in the circle you write the number for that part so let's say this is number one then number one it will point to the object so you have the object here with an arrow and we point that this object here is part number one 
and we cannot provide the names of the parts over here because it will make the it will jump up the whole sheet so what we do is that we just provide the part number in this circle here with an arrow pointing to that part then you produce what we call the part list so the part list here is where you will have the part number and then you will have the name of that particular part then also you need to include the number of parts that you have that correspond to that part number so for instance if you are assembling um, a, a, an engine block for instance or let's say you want to assemble a fan look at the ceiling fan you want to assemble it let's say the one with three blades the three blades are identical and because they are identical you don't need to list all of them that number one uh, blade number two blade number three blade no what you do is that you just list it you just point the arrow to one of the fan blades then we label it as number one then when we come to the part list on the table you add the section called quantity so quantity of that part and in this case is going to be three you have three units all right and that corresponds to part number one then you may also add the material for that part the material that is used for the part so you may also have a column for the material used for it then when you finish you add the title block to so the title block is the last one that you add to it all right so let's look at this example this is an example of um, dismantled assembly drawing so here we have the various components on their own they have not been put together or assembled together and the detailed dimensions have been given to us and here is showing the autographic uh, projections or we are just showing the projections of this assembly and this assembly they are the components of a universal joint a universal joint and the description have been given here universal joint is a rigid coupling and is used to connect two shafts if you have seen the propeller shaft of a vehicle if you see the articulator track or tipper track those um, uh, big tracks they use the propeller shaft is there is there even in smaller vehicles all right those four wheel drives or those rear wheel drives where the engine is positioned in front of the vehicle and the back is driving we have to connect the transmission of the power from the engine to the back wheels through the uh, the uh, propeller shaft all right but because you may not have them on the same level that is the engine the axis of the engine may be different from uh, the axis of the wheel all right they may be at different levels and therefore you cannot connect shaft direct to couple the two that wouldn't work so what you do is we use the propeller shaft and the propeller shaft in between the propeller shaft and then that uh, back wheel where we want to transmit the power to we have what you call the inversor joint and that inversor joint is able to allow the transfer of the power from the engine to the wheels through uh, different angles all right so irrespective of the angle we are able to smoothly transfer or transmit the power to the wheels all right so is it allows um the connection of two shafts whose axis intersect if extended so when you extend the axis of the shaft they intersect they are not parallel so in order to connect that you need the um universal joint so the universal joint will allow though the angle between them are intersecting right the two axes are intersecting 
and in order for us to be able to transmit that rotational power we need the inversor joint to facilitate that and in this figure it shows the details of the investor coupling the fork too so fork here number two so we locate number two where is number two this is number two here all right so that is the fork and number two the fork is showing is giving us here the sectional view of the fork and then we also have a projection of the fork so we can take this one here as the plan and we can see that this one is the um, sectional view or sectional front view then it says that they are mounted the forks the forks two are mounted at the end of two shafts one so here we have shaft one where is the sh number one this is number one and that is a shaft so here we are being shown a side view of the shaft and then we also have um, we can see that this is the front view and then we have say the end view of the shaft and here this is a section of the shaft so this symbol here meaning that we have broken a part of the shaft and it's not a complete one All right and there are certain features of the shaft which are there too we'll look at that later so that is number one the shaft then um and it's saying that these forks here are mounted they are mounted at the ends of two shafts so this shaft here we have two quantities of it and then the fork two we have two of it and it continues to say that making use of sunk keys six so sunk keys six this is the keys here so that's the key and it's a sunk key and we have two of that too because we have two shafts and on the two shafts we've mounted um one fork each on two shafts and we need to secure it by these sunk keys so it made it made use of the sunk keys to secure the shaft on the uh, the fork on the shaft i consider say that the central block three number three is here so that is the central block so the central block again we are showing a sectional view you can say sectional front front view and then the sectional uh sorry and then the plan sectional front view and the plan so that also corresponds to the central block three and this central block is having two arms at right angle to each other so we have the central block having two arms at right angle to each other so when we look at this central block here you can see that this is one arm when you view from one direction when you view from another direction we are seeing another arm here so this circular portion here is actually another arm like that one so they are crossing we have two crossing at 90 degrees like this all right then um, it says that it's placed between the fork and connected to both of them by using pins four and colors and colors five so the pins four number four is here so this is talking about the pin all right this is the pin then we have a color and that color is number five that is the color so here it says pins and color so when you look at it you will see that through this part here uh, through one uh, arm of the central block there should be a pin secured by color and the other one to the same a taper pin which is not shown is used to dip to keep a taper pin which is not shown is used to keep the pins for 
in position during rotation of shafts the angle between them can be varied all right during the rotation of the shaft the angle between them can be varied that is another information for us to understand how the joint worked all right so that pin which is not shown is to secure is to secure the the whole joint in position that is the last one that comes so the pin has not been shown but that one is to secure the this uh, whole joint together so it is a taper pin so let's look at it now so if you look at the taper pin has been listed they said taper pin so the taper pin will go through this hole here and then that hole so let's look at it now the description has been given to us and we know what is required so let's look at the diagrams so which part we go where and one way of analyzing and knowing where each part is to go is by looking at the dimensions of the various parts so if you look at this fork for instance a uh, fork for instance you can identify that between here and there the distance is 56 at the same time when we look at this side the central block that is the height of it of one arm from that point to that point is also 56 that is telling us that this arm here is to enter into this space provided over here in the fork all right okay now let's look at it again you also notice that the diameter for the pin is 16 millimeters and when we look at the central block the inner diameter over here is also 16 millimeters when we look at the fork if you look at the fork there is this hole over here which i've gone through from the top through the down and again you will see that if you look at the top view or the plan for the fork is giving us a diameter of 16 for that particular hole which i've gone through and that means that this uh, pin here right if we position this one inside this uh, fork then this pin will have to go through it to the top all right now we look at the pin again you realize that the color that has been given is having inner diameter of 16 which is the same as the outer diameter for the pin and that means that this color here will have to be on the pin or the pin have to be through the color so what will happen is that first we move this whole object into this space here and making sure that the axis of this hole is aligned with the axis this axis here all right then we pass the pin through so the pin we go through it to the top and when the pin goes through to the top make sure that the top here this area is resting at the, the surface over here and then the end comes out over here then when that is done we mount this uh, collar on top when we mount the collar on top see here they are written hole for the uh, diameter three home hole for taper pin diameter three so here means that this hole here and that hole they are the same and the diameter for both is three so if they all have diameter equal to three millimeters means that they have to be aligned together and there is a taper pin which is not shown but it's having a diameter of three because it has to go through this hole to secure the whole assembly together so when the this part here has gone through it and then we have the pin going from the bottom up here and the teeth coming out of here 
Now we mount this object here on top. We mount the color on top, making sure that the hole here align with this small hole. Then the taper pin go through, and that means that we have finished the assembling of the fork and the central block. One part of it. The second part is the same. And in that case, when this one has been positioned here, what we have to do is to add the other portions to it. So the other portions here is to add one other fork. And that will come from this particular side. When it's coming from this particular side, it means that we are going to have the shape like what we have here, aligning with it, with the center hole inside here, aligning with it here. Then we draw all the other parts and this time around the pin is like it's going into it all right it's not the one that is lying up now like this but it's something that has gone through the hole so the diameter or the circumference of the pin will align with that one inside and then the color will also appear at the back with the taper pin securing it together the next thing that we need to add now will be the shaft and the shaft again we can determine where the shaft is by looking at the dimensions so if you look at the shaft diameter here it's 30 millimeters 30 millimeters all right and when we come here to the fork too we see that the fork is having inner diameter of 30 millimeters so these 30 millimeters here it means that we are going to um, insert the shaft at this side so this whole shaft will have to enter through the fork in that direction all right so when that is inside the fork then we can secure it with the key with the key and that is the key so if you look at it on the fork we have keyway on the fork and the dimensions given is 8 by 4 and then the 8 by 4 is the cross section of it when we come to the shaft too, there is a keyway the dimensions the dimension given to the keyway is 8 by 4 so that tells us that this um, key here which is 8 by 8 if you look at the dimensions the overall cross section is 8 by 8 so this 8 by 8 here meaning that half of the 8 in the height half of the half of it a uh, 4 which is half of the 8 will enter into the shaft when the shaft is positioned here you know that the surface here on the shaft will align with the inner diameter of the shaft so we have four space up and then four into the shaft down so that space there is where the key will enter to secure the shaft and the fork over there they will have another shaft the shaft are two per the preamble so there will be another one which will be connecting from this side to the uh, fork that will be coming from this side and that gives the total assembly of the various components here now let's look at the part list so the part list in this case we have the shaft so here we have the number the serial number the name of the part and then we have the material that is used for the part and then the quantity so if you look at here number one number one is the number one is the shaft all right and that corresponds to one then we have the fork number two number two is the fork so the shaft we have two quantities of the shaft and the fork two the fork two we have two quantities of the fork and then we have the central block the central block we have only one quantity that's the central block number three that correspond with it and we have only one then we have the pin the pin is number four so pin number four we also have two of it 
we have the color the color number five we also have two then the key number six the key number six we also have two of it then the material that i use this could be mass steel and then the other ones that are there all right so you need this information so when you are assembling you have to make sure that when the assembling is done you are able to determine the quantity of each part in your assembly so that none will be missing out maybe somebody may forget one he did not put instead of putting two keys you only put one so look at the whole assembly you only identify one key inside that is wrong your joint will come apart it will not stand and all the components here are necessary for your joint to operate without one of them the joint cannot operate as required even the smaller paper pin that is given here which has not been shown without it that uh, joint will not work All right, this is another one and this one is the knuckle joint the knuckle joint is also a type of joint it's a type of joint but this one is a pin joint and it's used to connect two circular rods subjected to axial loading so you have two rods that are subjected to axial loading and if you look at, I think I've been seeing some on the electric poles. Those uh, poles that they use to uh, connect those electricity cables. You see that usually, especially when they are at corners or it appears that there is some uh, force cable which is trying to, there is some, the cable on top. There's one which is at a corner which is trying to pull it. They usually support it with a cable to the ground to prevent it from falling. And that cable, I've observed that there are some they have that joint, that pin joint. All right, and that one, you want to connect secure that one to the ground and then the top, and then they put the, that joint in the middle. And usually that cable is under tension. There is a pull from one side and there's a pull from the other side. So the cable is subjected to tension. And this is a type of joint that is mainly used for such purpose. Right, this is one of it. And um, one of the rods can be swiveled through some angle about the connecting pin. So in this particular joint, one rod can be, you can swivel it, you can move it about the joint. So you can move either of the rods. And then um, the figure that we have here shows the, detail, the details of that knuckle joint. The eye, the eye end of the rod too is inserted. Where is the eye end of the rod? number two is here that one so we have the say front view and a top view of the eye end of the um joint so the eye end of that rod is inserted into the fork into the fork end one the fork end number one so eye end inserted into the fork end so we have also the top view and the sectional front view of the other end. Then um, pin three, the pin three 
is inserted through the holes in the end of the rods and held in position by color 4 and paper pin 5. So we have the pin which will go through and is secured by the color. So that is the pin 3 secured by color 4 and paper pin 5. So in this particular case, they are um, five different components that are being put together. If you look at the previous one, in the previous one, we have six parts, but all these parts are some are identical, right? We have six different parts. Some are identical, and some of them, like the, we have two. There are some we have two of each, all right, except the central block. But they are made of. In this case, we are made of. This is made of um, six different parts. But when we look at this one. We have five different parts, and they are different. And it none is repeating. Right, so if you look at the quantity, the quantity here we have um, one for the fork end, the eye end, the pin, the collar, and the paper pin. All right, so let's analyze this one too. The description has been given to us, and with that, we have fair understanding of what the joint should be like. But let's look at the dimensions to and see if we can put them together. So first, we have the understanding that the eye end number two and the fork number one have to be secured together. And we want to put the two together. All right. So those are the two main things that we are assembling. The other thing that we are adding to it is to make our assembling secure so the pin the color and the paper pin are to help us to achieve that so first we have one and two we have to put them together first so we put one is here insert number two into it so when number two goes into it the eye end enters the fork then before we do that let's look at it again you realize that the distance from this space here the space within the fork from year to year is 28 and when we come here to this eye end of the joint there is this symbol like a square square box small one this one here and they have put that symbol 28 that means that this year the area here is having a cross section, a square cross section, and that square cross section is having the size 28. All right, so if that side is a square section, square cross section, that is what we are seeing over here. So the distance from here to the top is 28, and if that is the case, it means that this area here will be entering into that. So it enters into it and make sure that as it enters into it, the hole here align with that hole here. So the axis of this hole align with the axis of that hole. So you have 24 in diameter. This one too is having 24 in diameter. Those two holes have to be aligned together. Then if you look at the pin, the pin is having an outer diameter of 24. And that is the same as the inner diameter for these holes here. So it means that the pin will then enter through this hole. But then we already have the eye end of the joint inside. Then the pin will go through. Then after the pin have gone through, we will have the collar. So the collar again here, you see that the inner diameter is 24. And then the outer diameter of the pin is 24. So the collar should go through it like that. 
then when the color is gone through we have to make sure that this hole here will align with that hole in the color there to align with it and then when it aligns with it this cut up um, the taper pin having diameter of five will go through to secure it so when this pin is here we will have this color on top and then we have the pin going through this hole through that one to the other side to secure the joint so you see that this one this last pin is what to make the whole joint secured and rigid so without it the joint will not stand it will um, go apart and it will not serve its purpose all right thank you very much if you have any questions you can forward it thank you